We've had so many questions about how to grow lavender. It's a really, really commonly requested subject. So often over the last 13 years, customers have asked me, how do I grow lavender? Or they tell me they've had an issue growing lavender. So we wanted to do this video to talk about how you can grow lavender, but also why you really should. The second question is really easy. Lavender's quite magical. It's fairly easy to grow. And here in the UK, there are many varieties that you can grow outside all year round. I'll come to that in a minute. There's many varieties that you can grow all year round that really provide you with that all year round interest. But lavender is so much more than just a safe option to grow all year round. It's highly aromatic. The foliage is beautiful. It differs depending on which variety you're going to grow and you've got a lot of choices in terms of which variety you grow. But I think that the foliage of lavender is a really underrated selling point. The foliage is quite architectural. It looks good in the growing space. There are so many different shades of green and gray that change constantly as you go through the year. Lavender isn't just something that you plant and then it's there and you forget about it. It changes with the seasons. It's a constant, ever-changing presence. And that's before I even talk to you about the flowering options. The flowering is why many, many people grow lavender. The lavender plumes that lavender will produce are stunning. I'm sure we've all seen those viral videos of people running through lavender fields. Planted en masse, they look stunning, don't they? In those nice, neat, straight lines. But even if you just got one lavender plant on your balcony, both you and the local wildlife are going to love these flowers. That point is worth referencing again. You're going to love the flowers that lavender produces. They give you so many options. They're a great cut flower option. We have so many questions from florists and flower arrangers about the possibility of using lavender to add to bouquets cut flower bouquets to bring into the home, but also for professional arrangements for weddings. Lavender's a really, really great option. But it's not just you that's gonna be enjoying lavender. The local wildlife are really gonna be grateful to you for planting lavender in your growing space. Seriously, lavender is one of those plants that bees will flock to. And I'm a big advocate for planting for bees, not just as a one-off when everything is in flower in the summer and the bees have got so many options, but actually providing a long season of flower for the bees. What does that mean? Well, you can plant varieties like lavender, each with differing flowering periods, subtly different flowering periods, to provide a long season of resources for the bees. So lavender plants that are going to flower earlier in the summer, and then lavender plants such as a beautiful variety called lavender vera, that's one of my favorites at the moment, that's gonna go on into the autumn. Essentially, you can use lavender to make sure you've always got something that's going to be of interest to the local bees. It's worth adding that lavender is a culinary variety too. We've traded at food festivals over the years, and so many producers of beautiful cakes and biscuits have used lavender to season biscuits and add to the icing that goes on top of biscuits. Fun fact for you, apparently Queen Victoria used to love lavender biscuits. Who knew? What do you reckon? Have I done a good job extolling the virtues of lavender? Hopefully now you're thinking about making some lavender flavoured biscuits. I know that's what I'm thinking about. Now the first choice that you've got to make when thinking about growing lavender and considering how you can grow lavender is choosing a variety. Varieties of lavender which are called English lavender tend to be a lot more hardy than other varieties. So varieties like Munstead and Hidcut, which are classic varieties of English lavender, tend to be very hardy. And that means that they'll survive what's called normal winter conditions, whatever they are. When you buy a lavender plant, ask the person selling it. If you come to one of our stands, ask me whether or not the lavender plant is hardy. Most English lavenders will be hardy. Varieties of English lavender will be nice and hardy, so they'll survive the cold. You can leave them out during the winter, whereas particularly French lavenders will be less frost hardy, and you will have to think about protecting them a little bit. It's often advised that the best time to plant lavender is in the spring, when the soil is warm, and the plant's got time to get established without the winter weather causing issues with waterlogging and damp. And this brings me on to the 
most important advice that I can give you when growing lavender. Most varieties of lavender are really hardy, but they are not going to enjoy sitting in water. This applies to all varieties of lavender. It's often suggested that the best time to plant lavender is in the spring when the soil is nice and warm and you're not going to have issues with waterlogging throughout the winter with your young lavender plant. Now this issue of drainage and waterlogging is vital to growing lavender. If there's one bit of advice that I'd give you about growing lavender, that is to make sure that the ground is not waterlogged, that wherever your lavender plant is, it can drain freely. Many herbs, lavender, rosemary, thyme, sage, will ask for free draining conditions. And it's worth pausing for a moment just to consider what that means. When you see the label that asks for free draining conditions, it essentially means that the plant needs to be planted somewhere where if it rains or if you water the plant, it can drain freely. That means that the plant will not get waterlogged and you won't get issues with the roots rotting. You can create these free draining conditions by if you're planting the lavender plant in the ground, improving the ground, improving the drainage, working some grit into the ground and making sure that it can drain freely. Of course, some of you might be really lucky and you might have beautiful free draining conditions. We don't here, we're growing on heavy clay soil. So if we plant lavender in the ground, we all need to work on the ground extensively. I prefer to plant lavender in a container or a raised bed where I can control the makeup of the growing medium quite easily. If I'm potting up lavender into a raised bed or a container, again, I'm gonna work a lot of grit into the growing medium to make sure it can drain away nice and freely. That's so, so important. It will prevent any issues with the plant getting waterlogged and rotting. If you've got the option to do so, lavender will enjoy a sunny position. It will enjoy sitting in the sunshine in those free draining conditions and it will grow really, really happily. Drainage is the most important factor even if you haven't got these glorious sunny conditions. We used to live somewhere where our only growing space was actually overshadowed on both sides by buildings and lavender grew fairly well there because the drainage was so good. Poor drainage and shaded conditions are a recipe for disaster with lavender. In terms of ongoing care, as the lavender plant grows, you're gonna to wanna to prune the lavender back on a regular basis. Very often people get in touch with me and they say that their lavender plant has gone woody. Maybe you're nodding your head right now as you watch this video thinking that this has happened to you. When I say woody, I'm talking about the bottom third or two thirds of the plant becoming quite woody in terms of the texture. And you're gonna get less and less beautiful foliage. And the way to prevent this is to prune back the plant on a regular basis. Now this involves cutting back the top third of the plant, bunching it together nice and evenly like that, and cutting back the top third on a regular basis. You're gonna to wanna to do this regularly throughout the season definitely after flowering, but regularly throughout the growing season to keep the plant nice and compact. Compact is a good horticultural term, and it just means keeping the plant nice and bushy and encouraging that positive growth, encouraging the plant to thicken out through regular pruning. And pruning is gonna bring a lot of other advantages to your lavender plant as well. It's gonna allow more light into the center of the plant. It's going to allow greater airflow around the plant. And that's just gonna make for a healthier lavender plant it's going to decrease the chances of pests causing issues with lavender. So I'm a big fan of pruning. A lot of people don't want to prune back their plants and I can understand why. They're your plants, they're your babies, right? You're so proud of their growth. But actually it's essential to prune back herbs to encourage that regular growth. But it's essential to prune back your herb plants to encourage that positive, healthy growth. Your herbs will thank you for it in the long run. In terms of watering, you haven't got too much work to do. Lavender's gonna need a little bit of water when it first gets established. But once the lavender plant is established, it's quite drought tolerant. And in fact, it will just do its own thing. We've got some lavender growing in a part of the garden which very rarely gets any maintenance, care or attention. And lavender just does its thing. Lavender does lavender things. It carries on growing. It carries on sending out those beautiful plumes. And other than pruning, as long as you get those conditions correct at the beginning, you get those free draining conditions, your lavender plant is gonna be really, really happy. There's something else really important I wanna say about lavender. It's a really, really aromatic herb. It has the ability to do what the very best herb plants do, to take you away from whatever is going on in your life, in your day at the point that you encounter it. I'm gonna let you in on a secret. I didn't sleep very well last night. 
I'm pretty tired as I'm recording this video. But standing here now, I can smell the lavender and it's taking me away. It's taking me to somewhere slightly less stressful, away from all the thoughts that are keeping my mind busy. It's allowing me to switch off a little bit and I'm so grateful to herbs in general and lavender in particular for that. It does what the best herbs do. It makes you smile. It makes you feel better. And I'm so grateful to herbs in general and lavender in particular for that. I'm Andy from Urban Herbs and I really hope that you've enjoyed this little crash course in how to grow lavender. If you've got any questions, please just drop us a comment below and we'd be delighted to try and help you. Follow us on social media, on Instagram and Facebook. Our team love talking about herbs and we love talking to you too. Until next time, guys. See you later.